How to meet a Japanese woman? Welcome to our special lesson series in finding true love and a happy marriage. Hi, my name is Nako, your personal matchmaker. Hi, my name is Roland. My wife is Nako, who is Japanese. Lesson 2. <clears throat> Solve the issue between you and your Japanese partner with a cross cultural marriage coach. Introduction of Mrs. Etsuko Tsukagoshi. Today we are going to introduce our helpful partner, Mrs. Etsuko Tsukagoshi, who is a cross cultural marriage coach. Her company is called My Peaceful Family, and she has been specializing in international couples coaching for years. She is Japanese and her husband is American. Hello, Etsuko san, how are you? Hi. <laughs> Would you please introduce yourself? Yes. Hi. So, as Naoko said, my name is Etsuko and I'm in San Diego, California. I have been coaching cross cultural marriage, uh, cross cultural couples, marriage or otherwise. I started in 2010. It has been like four years. And uh, I mostly coach them on the issues that are very unique to the fact that they are coming from very different cultural backgrounds. Oh, oh, how did you and your husband meet? So, my husband and I met in Japan actually. I was working for the United Nations at that time in Japan, and my husband, he's American, and he, that time he was working for the U.S. Navy, and he was stationed in Japan. And uh, we actually had a mutual um, hobby, which mm. is swing dancing. And one day, um, I wanted to learn swing dancing, so I took lessons, and they were having a um, street festival, a jazz festival in a place called Asagaya, Tokyo. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And when I went to the festival by myself, because I knew that my class, the classmates, you know, the dance class classmates were going, uh -huh. um, my husband was there. Too. So we actually met and we danced even without talking first. Do you still uh, dance? Uh, I mean, yeah, he actually tried to go swing dancing occasionally. That's fantastic. Etsuko san started My Peaceful Family in order to help people who are in multicultural marriage, especially Japanese women and their spouses. Yes, yes. Yeah. Would you please explain about your service? Yes. So, what I do is when Japanese women find me through my website or blog, Mm -hmm. um, and when they are having difficulties, um, either they're thinking about getting married to a non-Japanese partner or they mm -hmm. are already married but having difficulties, um, mm -hmm. uh, we set up a session. And depending on the nature of the challenges, mm -hmm. uh, the duration of the coaching sessions body, sometimes we just do one-time session and sometimes it's a series of maybe six sessions or eight sessions mm -hmm. long if the issue is coming from somewhere very deep. Mm. On, on Skype, right? Yeah, so oh. we do have a Skype, so mm -hmm. my clients um, can be anywhere in the world as long okay. as we can um, overcome the time difference and set up a good date and time. Mm -hmm. Are you satisfied as a relationship coach? Yes, um, I am certified as a coach. Um, there is no certification specifically to a relationship coach. What happens in this country, the States, is that um, there are coaching schools and you can take classes and you can get certified. And I did the certification course, so I am a certified coach. And mm -hmm. when, I'm trying, when I was trying to pick um, specialty, I decided to become a relationship marriage coach specialized in cross-cultural um, you know, marriage because there are a lot of people who do coaching if, of all kinds of things, but I thought that this is um, sort of underserved population. And because I myself am married to an American husband, and when I was getting married, there are issues that was very unique to the fact that, that you know, I'm marrying somebody who is not Japanese. So um, I feel passionate about this subject, and that's why I decided to uh, do this. 
Uh, who are your clients? Which gender makes up the greatest percentage of your clients, men or women? Um, mostly men, uh, sorry, mostly women contact me first. But as the session progress, sometimes Japanese women ask me to speak with their husbands also. So sessions uh, can be done either in Japanese or English or both if both of them are present in a session. What are the major issues that your clients ask you about? Would you give us some examples? Yeah, so the issue, nature of the issue is very um, case-by-case basis. Mm. And um, this is my theory, like couple fall apart because they can't overcome their differences. Mm. And that difference can be um, shown anywhere from the difference between you know, how, what to feed kids and you know, what time they should go to bed or how they should spend money, uh, where to live, um, the role of husband and wife. But I think money is a big thing, actually, and this is not just about cross-cultural couples, I think. Mm. My, my observation is even Japanese to Japanese couple or American to American couple, they, you know, fight about money a lot. I think that's one of the top reasons why people get divorced, too, you know, money and also sex, I guess. Uh, how do you help couples, including both the man and the woman? So the actual session is, I guess, very similar to what you might see on TV or movie, you know, the marriage counseling. So I listen to both sides of the story. But what's different is that I'm very forward-looking. That means that we try to come up with solutions that work for both parties. And depending on the issues, sometimes people get upset for reasons Um, beyond what's apparent on the surface. It could go to very, um, you know, it comes from the belief that they formed when they're growing up. So if that's the case, we have to try different things. But it's mainly like talking and expressing and, you know, try to come up with a mutual agreeable solution. Do your clients ask about the head? Convers- oh, hey, convers- yeah, the, this this agreement be- begins in April in uh, 2014. 2014 in Japan. Yes, mm. um, I would say most of my clients who read my blog know mm. about Hague Convention. Uh, what it is that um, so before this um, Japan participated in Hague Con- Convention, um, if you get married, like let's say I'm Japanese woman and I get married. And I have kids with my American husband living in the States. If things fall apart, I could just go home to Japan with my kids. And obviously, in the States, this, that's against, against the law. You know, I will be considered mm-hmm. a kidnapper. But before this, um, actually next month, starting next month, Japan participated in the Hague Convention, it was not illegal in Japan. So once the Japanese wife takes kids back home to Japan, there, there wasn't any much um, the American husband could do. But now it's all changing because Japan also has to comply with the Hague Convention. So even if you manage to go back to Japan with the kids, you have to bring back the kids to where they were living in order to decide what's the best um, thing to do for the kids. Mm, this is a good news for male Male members, I mean, uh, men. Yeah, I think the people, kind of. uh, there were like different opinions in Japan, I think. And people, some women's groups are very against in Japan signing in this, you know, Hague Convention because they were afraid that um, this would make the Japanese wives get stuck in the state in the miserable marriage. Yeah. But um, domestic violence, right? Yeah, domestic violence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, but I think it works both ways actually because the cross-cultural couples are not only living in the states but also in Japan too. And mm-hmm. on the flip side, you know, if you're living in Japan with kids, with your uh, foreign husband or partner, they cannot just take kids away from you, you know. So it protects both sides, I think. And it would help the children, too, because they yeah. would get to see both of their parents. Yeah. 
Uh, how about prenuptial agreements? Most Japanese women don't know about them. If you ask a Japanese woman about signing a prenuptial agreement before getting married, she would be shocked. You know, I think it's not just Japanese women who would be shocked. Even though the prenuptial pre agreement is kind of common here, um, I think people think that it's mostly for very rich people. And there is actually a movie about this very subject, I think, with George Clooney and I forget. I think. Oh, yeah, I yeah, I saw it. I watched it. And it's, it's called Prenup. And yeah. what it is that, um, so they try to get the other person yeah, from the issues. prenup. But um, I think there is obviously like cultural barrier too, to, you know, some, for some people, it's unthinkable to have to think about uh, in case of divorce, even before you get married. But um, for some people, though, this is a good thing because you can protect your asset. And when we talk about money like this before you even get married, some people say, you know, it's not romantic. But I think a lot of things about actual like marriage is a lot less romantic than, you know, <laughs> It just you know you're just thinking about or dreaming about marriage it's marriage is work marriage takes effort from both sides so that's just one way to express like you know this is how committed we are and I think my I personally did not have prenup with my husband we actually talked about it though like should we make one because you know we thought it would be a good idea but when we looked at what each other had in terms of money and in you know, all the assets, we thought, you know, we are in California, so if we get divorced, we just get half each. And uh, what we saved up was not that much different, so I thought, uh, I don't have to sign the prenup. But yeah. I think if my husband insisted, I think I would have. Yeah, we are talking about living well in, in, for the future, mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's uh, important. And many Japanese women do not understand about it. Oh, it's yeah. not a measure in Japan. Yeah, living well is very, very important, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Because if, especially if you have children, mm -hmm. it's like being responsible and preparing for you know the worst case. Mm -hmm. How about uh, financial management in family? In Japan, it's normal for the husband to be the breadwinners. In the U.S., there is much more diversity. Yes, that's true. Um, I think this is also one of the um, causes of friction because Japanese wives just expect that husband be the person. You know, we, we, we say the word daikoku bashira, the breadwinner. Right. It depends on where the other person is coming from, you know, cultural background. Because even if we say American, you know, Americans came from somewhere at some point, so they have different cultures too. And um, if, so I think it's, very important to discuss this before at the beginning of marriage like what you expect to be like what 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 it means to be married what it means to be a team you know like mm -hmm. just not not just about man, money but mm -hmm. uh, everything okay uh, how does your typical session work how long is one session typically a session is uh 45 minutes to one hour and uh Depends on the case, but usually I want to work with them like once a week for a few, you know, few months at a time. Do you speak English or Japanese in the session? Um, if I'm just talking to a Japanese woman, then obviously I'll just use Japanese. But if I'm talking to somebody who doesn't understand Japanese, then I can use both. Uh, how many sessions do your clients usually do with you? Um, yeah, and it depends on the case. Uh, sometimes it can be just one session, you know, just one time. Um, some um, client asks for ongoing, you know, one one on one session for extended period of time. So it is. And, and how do you do clients make appointment with you? Uh, they can just send me email. They can uh, contact me through Facebook. Um, different ways, mm -hmm. but usually they email me and we set up the time. <clears throat> Okay, and uh, also uh, they can make an appointment with our website. So yes, I uh, see. MeetJapanLady.com. Meet mm -hmm. Yeah, and many people meet through online dating sites, and uh, nowadays it may seem easy to find and marry a Japanese woman. 
However, if you and your spouse are facing difficult relationship issues, it may be hard to find a relationship coach who can speak Japanese and English and can really understand international marriage issues. That is why MJL highly recommends Itsuko Tsukagoshi and her service. My peaceful family for any international relationship issues, so we feel that Etsuko san can really help you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you next time. Thank you.